Hello everyone, I'd like to quickly show you how to solder one of these uh, onto a standard cheapo, what's it, two bucks, five bucks, whatever, uh, PCB as you can get it from the standard Chinese manufacturers. So this is the package we're talking about. This is a WC, uh, WSCP uh, wafer scale chip package, I believe. Um, chip, uh, it's got 16 uh, 16 balls under it and the entire chip is effectively the silicon die which means that it's pretty tiny just to uh, bring that home um, I'll now put a, a 2.54 uh, standard header in into the image and you can see that it needs, neatly fits between the pins so this is a chip that is well, very easy to ping away accidentally. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder that on a standard PCB. So, so this is the PCB in question I designed for it. So the little chip uh, is a little 32-bit microcontroller. Um, and this is a simple PCB that just has all the uh, components that are needed, like decoupling, uh, there's a reset circuit, uh, it's got power connections and an S SWD uh, connector in order to program the chip. And it has a whole bunch of resistors and LEDs. And um, I already prepared one earlier. This is the exact same uh, PCB, or at least the same design, um, but I already soldered in the um, uh, components that I'm going to need in order to make use of this chip. So I'm now going to solder in the chip itself, and um, just as an indication, normally you would do the chip itself first, because if you mess something up, uh, you can just grab a new PCB and you don't have to desolder all the other components, which are generally easier to, to get right. So the setup I'm using here, by the way, is a stereoscopic microscope, but you can probably do this using a cheaper microscope as well. Uh, for instance, I'm not using the stereoscopic uh, view right now. I'm just looking through the viewfinder of my camera because the camera has a different focus than the microscope for some reason. So this is a PCB that comes from JLC PCB. Um, I don't... Um, uh, they're, they're not sponsoring this or anything. This is just where I happen to get it. Uh, you can probably get it from similar uh, PCB houses uh, for uh, a very low price as well. Uh, this is their standard cheap ass two layer uh, process. Uh, as you might be able to see, the finish on this is uh, HASL, so hot air uh, solder leveling, which means that after they uh, build the traces and put on the solder mask, they just uh, dump a bunch of solder on everything and they use hot air in order to kind of sort of make it go level. Um, that only works up to a certain uh, size of feature and as you can see in this particular case, because the, the pads are so small, they keep a fair amount of solder and that means that the footprint of this thing is fairly uneven. So the first course of action, the first thing that I should do is to remove that hot air solder uh, leveling uh, finish. And we'll do that by just taking some wick um, and uh, getting rid of it. So first of all, I'll add some flux. Flux is always good. And I'll take my soldering iron. I'll just wick away the stuff. As you can see, the other downside of this is that some of the pads might come loose, but this particular pad is not needed anyway. Um, so I just pulled off one pad, but that wasn't connected to anything anyway, so that is not a biggie. Just add a little bit more flux. And the way you solder these things is you effectively hot air them on. So you do need a hot air rework station. And the way I'll do that is I'll preheat it. Uh, I'll preheat everything a little bit so the flux can also run. Yeah, let's get this. 
This is just a, a fairly cheap ass uh, hot air uh, station. Uh, one of the cheapo, I think Atom 858D plus ones. They're, they're not that expensive. Okay, so preheat everything ever so slightly, just so the flux is nice and running. And then we come in with the chip. And the important bit here is to look at where pin one of the chip is. And you can see that my silk screen has a cutout where pin one should be. So I'm not, I'm not using any hot air at the moment. I'm just hovering away from it. And we'll place the thing somewhat at the right position according to what the solder mask tells us this is a little bit finicky but you don't have to get it like entirely correct it'll it'll compensate itself and then we just slowly go in with the hot air make sure to heat everything up a little bit and you can actually already see that the chip is moving somewhat and i think it just popped into place you can actually tell if you're really careful, if you poke it ever so slightly, and in this case a stereo microscope is very handy. And, oh, it's already stuck on, I think. So you can poke it ever so slightly, and I'm not sure if you notice, but it, it moves back into place. And that means that all the balls are uh, molten and have connected. So now we just let everything cool down as soon as we're sure that the solder isn't molten anymore we can inspect it by looking at the side and as you can see that looks absolutely great sorry for my shaky hands pcb is still hot so i can't really hold on to the thing yeah, that looks absolutely great. From this side as well. I hope you can see that. You can see that the balls are somewhat flat, but they're, they're, there's still a fair amount of room between them and the chip. So that looks good. Now obviously the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so let's connect this to a debugger and see if we can make the LED flash. This is 3.3 .3 volt. You can see how small the PCB is purely because those wires are already pulling it away. Sorry, it's pretty hard to keep this in frame. Don't go there. Okie dokie. Yeah, sorry, it's kind of dangling by the wires. Focus up a little bit. Now we can program the thing. And I hope you can see this, but all the LEDs are blinking. Not too bright, but they are blinking. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. And thanks for watching.